So we're going to talk about performing EDS in TM mode or conventional mode. Um, so on this particular microscope we have an EDAX uh, RTEM EDS detector and I'll go ahead and take the lid off here so you can see that from the cold trap. So this is the, the EDS system. Um, it has a bellows here and it goes in um, to the column there as you can see it is a lithiated silicon detector meaning it has to be cooled continuously by liquid nitrogen which is the point of having that massive doer go ahead and put the cap back on here okay so performing EDS in uh, TEM mode is relatively simple to do um, setting up is setting the system up is, is fairly straightforward the main consideration is that you need to be at eccentric height first and foremost then if you are using a single tilt holder which we're not a holder we have right now is a double tilt but if we were using a single tilt holder we would need to tilt the holder sufficiently so that we give the x-rays clear line of sight uh, the way we would do that would be to come to the stage tab here expand this arrow down here where it says set alpha you would put in 15 degrees and then you would hit set alpha and then that would set your alpha to an angle that is sufficiently high for you to get uh, detection with the single tilt holder again we're not going to do this because we don't have the single tilt holder and we don't have to the double tilt holder is designed in such a way that no tilting is necessary to get uh, an EDS uh, or an x-ray signal to the detector. Okay, so we won't do that. So anyway, I've got my sample at eccentric height and right now I'll go ahead and you can see here, I'll go ahead and increase the magnification a little bit. Okay, so I've got a bunch of different layers here on the sample. This is a sample, um, the same one used for the high resolution demo. So we've got a bunch of different layers here uh, and a bunch of different elements so it's a good sample for doing um, EDS demonstration. Um, I am at spot size 1 that usually works fine for doing EDS. Okay, so I come down here to RTEM control, select in, and you hear that noise, that's the EDS detector going in. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Okay, and now I'm going to watch the detector here while I hit the in button. Okay, it goes in. Okay. Um, the in button will also turn red here. Okay, you don't have to close this. In fact, that needs to stay open. Um, one thing you may notice here as a result of doing that is that you get a little shift of the beam. That's not really a big deal. Just go ahead and use your beam shift trackball and recenter it. Um, of course, you can go ahead and move the sample however you want right there. Okay, so now we're ready to collect an EDS spectrum. Okay, so come back here. There's an EDS tab. Okay, and basically everything's done in this EDX uh, control panel. Okay, so um, one of the things you can set is what's called the dispersion, um, which basically specifies the uh, spectral resolution and what's called the process time or sometimes referred to by EDAX as the amp time. And so there's two separate um, configurations for the dispersion in terms of the resolution per channel. So five, actually there's three, there's five, 10, and 20. Five is gonna give you the best resolution if you do 10 or 20, the advantage that will give you is it will allow you to detect higher energy x-rays. Um, normally, we always do this um, at uh, 5 EV dispersion. And then as far as the process time goes, um, on this particular instrument, you can usually use the fastest process time, which is 12.8 microseconds, and there are ways to program in um, faster process times. But empirically, I haven't noticed a big difference between 
102 and the 12.8. Um, in principle, a longer process time should give you better energy resolution, um, but obviously there's a point at which it's just simply too long and you're not really getting any initial benefit and you're just slowing down your spectrum collection. So we'll leave it right here and actually we'll, we'll demonstrate how this works here in a minute, okay? But we'll leave it at 5 EV per channel and 12.8 um, microsecond process time. And now I can select view here, okay? And this is just giving me like a live view every 60 seconds, which is what's programmed in here in live time. Um, it's going to cycle through and re-update the spectrum. So one of the things you have to do here periodically, if I right click, I can click auto scale, okay, and that auto scales my spectrum. Um, you do have to do that periodically, it won't do it automatically. Do that again. If you come along here, okay, there is a button here, peak ID that will auto ID the peaks. Okay, so you can see I've got lots of different elements in here. I've got platinum, iridium, um, I have a silicon substrate, and I've got molybdenum, which is from the grid. I can also come down here and I can tell it to label my transitions. So I've got my K alphas and my L alphas and my other transitions as well. Vertical auto scale again, so you can see. Okay, so right now, um, I'm getting this input counts about 6,000 counts a second. My dead time is around 30%, meaning 30% of the time my detector um, is off and not actually um, displaying counts in the spectrum. So one thing I can do here, just to show you this, if I make my dispersion, so let's say I go to 51.2 microseconds here for the same EV per channel. Okay, you can see now my dead time went way up. Okay. So my dead time went way up um, as a result of doing that. Okay, and so now my counts um, per second, or my output counts per second to the spectrum is now reduced. So now, because I made that process time longer, um, I'm getting, or my detector <clears throat> um, is spending more time off processing the pulses, so it takes a little longer to do. In principle, this should give you better energy resolution. In practice, I haven't noticed a huge difference between the 12.8 and the 100.4. So you'd probably have to make the process time a lot uh, shorter than this before you actually saw an effect. But if we come back down here, okay, so now you can see my process time went down and my dead time also went back down. And now my output counts per second went back to around 6,000 counts per second. Um, and so again, this is view. So if I want to acquire a spectrum for a set amount of time, I can just go ahead and click acquire. Okay, and usually one to two minutes of live time. So we'll go ahead, we'll set this at 60. And now keep in mind that's live time. Okay, so the actual time that it will take will be more than that generally because you have a non-zero dead time. Okay, so in other words, if your dead time is um, 30%, which is about what we have here, then your total time to collect the spectrum will be longer than a minute. If your dead time is 100%, um, then at that point, it will take forever to collect the spectrum. So you don't want to get too high of a dead time. Usually around 50% is kind of optimal in terms of optimizing your output counts a second. So we can come back here Go ahead and auto scale this. If I want to turn the labels off. That's pretty easy to do. You can come here. You click on the clicked on the little periodic table. 
You can turn off your individual labels. Okay. So we can see we've got 12 more seconds left and then this is gonna be done. All right, and so acquisition is done. So we have our final saved EDS spectrum here. So some of the manipulations we can do with this, obviously we already showed this before. I can do an auto ID here. Okay, and I can also tell it to give me the transitions. Um, one thing I can also do, instead of doing an auto ID, I'm going to go ahead and clear these. Click on the periodic table here, you can clear them. All right, so if I know, for example, that there's silicon in here, I, or I'm looking for it, I can just pull up the periodic table here and click silicon. Okay, and so there it's labeling now the K-peak, and then again, I can give it a label, okay, that is the K-alpha peak for the silicon. Um, I'll go ahead and do auto ID again. And then we'll label the transitions. Okay, so one thing you can do here, if you wanna uh, isolate part of the spectrum here, so I mouse over this, I see now I have the, the left right arrow, I'm holding down the shift key. If I left click and drag here, I can move that to the middle. And now I have, I'm not holding the shift key down, but I'm gonna left click and drag. I can expand the spectrum, okay, just in that region. And then if I right click, I can do vertical auto scale and just expand the spectrum in that region. If there's a region that you're interested in in particular, um, you can do the same thing here with the, the Y scale. If you, um, <clears throat> if you left click and drag, right? So you can make your Y limit bigger or smaller. Okay, you can do the same thing if you shift. You can change the position. Usually, of course, you just wanna put that at zero. I'm gonna just, I'll auto scale it, put it back, okay? Um, but again, I'll do the same thing here. I'll hold down shift, move that to the middle. And there we go. Okay, so now as far as uh, saving of this data, um, there's a few ways you can save it if I right click, I'm on the blue part here, the dark blue part. Okay, if I right click, okay, I go down to export. Okay, I can export it now as a text document. So the, this text file will have counts versus x-ray energy in it. And then it can be replotted however you want. Or the other way you can save this is, and that will of course, if I do that, okay, if I right click on the dark blue, that's the whole spectrum. Okay, now if I, if I want to take this image, okay, I just right click, now I'm on the light blue part, not the actual spectrum, go to export, and now I can export just this image, however it's shown here, okay, with the labels, with the range, and that can be exported as a TIFF or a bitmap. And so that's how you can save um, and export the data. And so we'll go ahead and we will auto scale the image um, the actual file here that this saves as, when you save this, of course you want to do that. This is saved as what's called an EMI file, um, and that's the, the file format that uh, the TIA software uh, uses. Of course, you want to make sure you save that because that is your raw uh, data file, and then you can open this up again and do whatever manipulations um, to it later that you would like. But this, of course, itself is not a text document or... Um, an image file. Okay, so we don't need this anymore. We'll go ahead. We'll just we'll clear this. We click this X box here. It's going to ask us if we want to save it. We don't. So we'll just click no, and then we'll do this here. 
for this one. So every time I do acquire, it's going to give me a new uh, window here that can be saved as its own EMI file. Um, so if we're done with the EDS, what we want to do now is take the detector out. You don't want to leave the detector in when it's not actively doing anything. Um, one thing you also want to be cognizant of here is that you don't want the detect or the beam to illuminate um, any part of the grid or any part that's basically not electron transparent because if that happens you will get an overload to the detector um, but if that happens um, it does have an automatic protection will retract uh, automatically so actually if we look here okay so there's my my area okay so if I move now All right, so I'm getting thicker, I'm getting more x-rays now. And then at some point here, detector should sense too much and it should retract. Yeah, okay, so you hear that noise. Okay, so that's the, the automatic shut off. Okay, so if I come to our TEM here, it says high CPS, meaning it got too much signal. Okay, so just you acknowledge that and then it's fine. I'm gonna go ahead here, I'm gonna move back. Okay, put the detector back in. Okay, and so the proper way to do this, of course, not to overload the detector, just select out, and then it's out. Um, if you were using the single tilt holder, you would also wanna go back to the stage tab, expand the stage two panel, and you would want to set alpha back to zero. We're not gonna do that, obviously, because we don't have the single tilt holder. And this concludes the demonstration of operating the FEI Techni F20 for EDS analysis in TEM mode.